moving into Seattle and Detroit, who will have a worse defense this year, Seattle or Detroit? Yeah, so yeah, this is tough. I think though, if I, I mean, if I had to answer right now, I feel like I got to go. I got, and it's just, again, it's a really tough question. I think I'm going to lean Seattle though, just because again, so much youth. Yeah. Again, the question is how many of them are going to make jumps. And I think we've seen Tariq Woolen still, Tariq Woolen still is that guy and he's making jump, you know, made a jump. But the question is with all the other young defenders, are they going to make their jump? You know, is everyone else going to hold their end? And the Lions, again, tough game, really tough. And they got shelled, but they showed us week one. But the thing that I think with the Kansas City offense back to the sample size, it's, it's like it's the Chiefs offense really struggling right now. So, you know, it's tough. But yeah, I mean, as of, as of the moment, I'm going to lean towards the Seahawks just because, you know, it's kind of been the theme recently is like yeah. the young defense gets shelled. Even when the offense puts up a lot of points, they play a lot of shootouts. So I think with that case, I got to go with the Seahawks. Yeah, I think for the worst defense, I'll actually, I think I'm going to see, say Detroit. Um, I think Seattle has like a lot of pieces on defense, like young pieces that could take steps like midseason. And, you know, when's the last time like Detroit's had an elite defense? Like Seattle has had it in the last decade. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, that is a, I, I trust a Seattle fact. to like figure it out more. So just kind of going off, just kind of going into the game more. So I thought the play calling for both teams was really, really good. And, but they both struggled with pass coverage. Like to talk about that defense, like it, it was, it was an offensive game and I'm not gonna lie. Every time Seattle and Detroit has played, it's been really fun to watch. It's been a really fun game to watch. <laughs> it definitely is a fun um, matchup. The Lions pass rush was pretty questionable this game. Like both quarterbacks had a lot of time to throw. Um, but let's get into Seattle's uh, Seattle. DK Metcalf has gotten better every year. Like even if he's not like developing new skills, like it's obvious. But like, it's nice to see that he hasn't like plateaued. Like you can tell he's his game is like aging well. Um, they were feeding Kenneth Walker a lot, but. Even even when it wasn't working, they were trying to give him the ball, try to establish that run game. I would really like them to see to use Charbonnet a little bit more because he was like on those short runs, like he was being pretty aggressive with the ball. Like I liked what I saw there. Um, and and the main thing is like maybe Gino really hasn't like maybe Gino hasn't grown as like a player like skill wise, but you can see like the step forward in the chemistry with those receivers where it's like. Their offense can cook like and, and Shane Waldron, their offensive coordinator, like head coach watch this year for sure. For sure. Um, the run defense was on and off. Um, they got into the backfield in the first half um, and then their then their defense started to show up in the pass rush later in the game. Um, but yeah, no, the, the Seahawks receiving core is deep. They have a lot of weapons on offense and uh, looks like a completely different team than uh, week one. No, I would say, if, so just for starters, you know, just like you just said, I think if you're a Seahawks fan, you're definitely taking a deep sigh. You're like, all right, you know, Gino, he still didn't write back, you know, we're, we're chilling. Yeah, yeah. Still, like, you know, week one, it happens. And then, you know, again, it looked, and then I'm with you 100%. Zach Charbonnet, let's get Zach Charbonnet more carries. I, I was, I tweeted like, I was literally like the four years ago, three years ago. I said, Zach Charbonnet, RB1. I don't even know what class he was at the time or anything, but I saw him playing at, a, I think it was at UCLA. And dude was just running, man, like just yeah. running. He looked huge to a time where it was like, you know, you you know when you see an NFL back in college a lot of times because they just look so much bigger than a lot of the running backs. And it's like, all right, yeah, that guy's got size. You know, he's, he's going to be able to take hits. And yeah, he was just in that category. And now that he's here, again, four yards of carry, get the man the ball more. Kenneth Walker, though, too, pounded, you know, get, getting them touches, making it work at the goal line. And, you know, it, it, we know Kenneth Walker, very talented guy. Um with the Seahawks, I think, and I, I like thing like I said, and you said that, yeah, a lot of young defenders. I'm with you. I do think a lot of the young defenders are going to make a jump this year. I just think it could just again, it comes down to volatility within, and they're going to get in shootouts. They're definitely going to yeah. get in more of these games. It, it it'll be what it'll be. But I do think again, when in terms of upside, I think the Seahawks defense has more upside because yeah. again, with the Lions, yeah, no, that's not what you want to see. 37 points against the Seahawks, tough look. Um, and again, <laughs> Jared, <laughs> Jared Goff. And it's not the Seahawks are a good team, but it's just tough to get shelled for 37 no matter who you are. And again, you don't want to see that week two when the identity of the Lions, like we were saying before, was the offense will put up a lot of points. The offense is going to, you know, is going to do their job. And then in those games, the defense doesn't. You don't want to see this. This is tough. And again, too, no pressure really this game. Uh, you know, let me just make sure I'm correct here. But yeah, one sack the whole game and the sack came from Alex Anzalone. You know, against the younger offensive line, you'd want to see more pressure. You'd want to see more disruption. And it just didn't happen. Two, something I wanted to say is Jared Goff was very, very close to having the record, the NFL record for yeah. most passes. Jameer Gibbs screwed him, man. Without, without 
funny. And I'm like, no, like, oh, that would have been hilarious to have Jared Goff have the record. And I know I've seen QBs on this watch multiple times in my life where they get really close. Yeah. And it's like, oh, man, it just happened. And you knew it. You knew it. The announcers are jinxing it. It was bound to happen, right? Uh, yeah. And it's like, it is what it is. I think you and me can both agree on this. We want to see Jameer Gibbs get the ball more. I know they're trying to work him in. They're trying to, you know, it is what it is. He's and just Monty such looked, a liability when it comes to like pass protection. No, that, they're, they're, they say there's reasons he's not in there. And, and Monty looks good too. Hey, Monty looks good. It is what it is. It's not like you're like losing reps to someone who is, in, you know, is, is not doing their job out there. Monty looks good. I'm on raw. I mean, you know, I, I called it the breakout last year and he hasn't disappointed this year either. Steady steps forward. Sam Laporta is already an elite tight end too. That's something I wanted to touch on. Like we're at the point where I don't get, hate me if you want. When most tight ends come out, even when they're expected to be really good, Kyle Pitts being like the rare exception recently, I feel like. Yeah. They usually not struggle the first year, but they just don't get a lot of targets. You know, you kind of very, struggle very hard to get targets in an offense when you're a rookie tight end. You normally don't start right away. You're kind of, you know, you're, you're pushing for targets. We can see Sam Laporta is not in that situation. Oh, Sam he's Laporta balling. is is already one of Jared Koff's top one targets. He's I would say I'm very impressed too by his route running. Like, not that I didn't think, I thought I didn't think he was like a bum route runner or anything, but honestly, he, you know, he, he's shaking a little, he's shaking loose a little bit. He looks really good out there. He, he, he's already an elite tight end straight up. Uh, I'm very happy I got him in Dynasty. I'm just going to leave it at that. Oh, two and my thing I also wanted to touch on is, um, you know, Khalif Raymond this year, he's, he's looked solid so far. Like, he's had some, he's yeah. had some good catches. That's just kind of his role in the offense. Their role playing like wide receivers has had, uh, have had, um, and Josh like Reynolds, good too. Game. Good like, games Josh for Reynolds, them. They look good. Like, they're, they're doing their job. It is what it is. Uh, you know, they got shelled this game. But I think my main thing is with uh, with the Lions is, you know, don't panic. But don't panic about the offense, I guess. The defense has got to show that they're not. this is not going to be the same story. I mean, at least yeah. we know the offense. Uh, the offense is steady on the uprise. There's a lot of things about the offense you got to love. I, I want to say shout out Dangerous for hanging out in here. He's been uh, lighting up the chat, talking about the. Who has? Uh, his name is Dangerous. But hey. um, yeah, d- Sounds, he, bro, he actually brought this you. up. I saw this earlier. Uh, Donovan Knight signed with the Lions. I did just see this earlier. I yeah. forgot, but I did just see this earlier. Um, but he was talking about just Seattle's defense has been an issue for years. Yeah, if they can really improve it, their offense is really like they have a lot of weapons. So it, it would be cool to see Seattle go far and, and make a playoff run. So I'll just quickly touch on Detroit and then we can go on to the next game. So kind of what you were saying, like, Goff is very quick with his decisions and like you could tell like you can tell he's confident with this team and I really like that the Lions have like opened uh, welcomed him with open arms and like accepted him as their quarterback because it's like he fits there um he had some really good deep balls um and and you know he's underrated like people just don't talk about Jared Goff like they should um I already said this but they don't like Gibson pass pro that's why he doesn't get that's why he doesn't get the reps but Monty is a great fit. It's I think the run game is going to suffer quite a bit, actually, without him, um, at least the inside run and the short yardage runs like um, they're they don't have another guy on the roster that's going to do that. And here's what I will say. Ben Johnson, their offensive coordinator, did not call a single head scratching play the whole game. Like not to say he was before. It's just like the consistency with his play calls are so nice, even if they don't convert. It's like that was a good play call. Like you, they just didn't execute. Um, like you were saying with Laporta, great pick. Like rookie, that's producing like that. Not the greatest in the run block. He could get. He was getting some blocks off, but he's got a ways to go. But he was making contested catches in the clutch. Like as a rookie tight end, like it's making the Hawkinson trade look better and better, especially because the Vikings just paid him and Josh Oliver. It's just making Iowa tight ends look better and better. You yeah. Know, the, stock just, he, the stock just keeps going up with those Iowa tight ends, man. Um, so the main thing I want to touch on the defense and then, um, then we can move on to the next game. So first off, they were holding, uh, Aiden Hutchinson a lot, a lot, like almost every play. Um, but here's what I will say there was a lot of missed opportunities, turnover sacks, and they really should have capitalized on that injured Seattle offensive line. They were without, I that's think both their tackles. That's what I'm saying. It's like, like you want to see them and not, just the young line in general. It's like, you want to see, you want to see some fireworks from your D line that game. And it's like, you know, that's just tough. Where do um, dangerous ass? Where do you want to see Ben Johnson take the head coaching gig? Well, I'm a Bears fan, so I'm hoping they clean house this year and he comes to the Bears. I think they're I hope they get rid of Justin Fields and just draft a new QB and let Ben Johnson come in and cook. I don't really know. I mean, like I think Kellen Moore is the next head coach of the Chargers once Staley's gone. Talk about a successor um, in the house. Yeah, literally. Ben Johnson? I don't 
I mean, Ben Johnson would. Uh, I'm trying to think who who who's going to have head coach openings next year. That's that's the thing is I almost it's a great question. I just struggled to answer the question because I again who do we think was going to be losing a job? I thought for sure that Ron Rivera was going to be on the outs. Well, right now it's the looking enemy looks like great. I say it looks like. It's like that situation looks fine over there, and yeah, exactly. Even if that was the case, the enemy looks great over there. It's like so, yeah. I don't, I don't really know who I think is going to be someone who's just a like guarantee to kick their coach out the door. Because even with the teams that are struggling right now, it's like yeah, Kevin O'Connell's probably not would not get the boot even if the Vikings finish really rough. Belichick's definitely not. It's like, uh, I guess the Raiders. Raiders? I was the just Raiders about to would say be, the Raiders would definitely. Oh be, my God! What? Get T Higgins to Carolina and get Ben Johnson with Bryce Young. Hell no. Get Frank I'm right kidding. out of there, man. <laughs> Get Frank right out of there. That would be crazy, though. On a serious note, on a serious note, that would be crazy. I mean, that's, I mean, to, that would be best case scenario. I, I, again, really I still believe in Bryce 100%. Bryce, is, Bryce looks fine. It's the, we're going to touch this when we get to the to the Panthers. Yeah. But that'd be a great situation. 